So here we are starting off for the night. There is the frame, uh, that recess that looks like it's framed out with a window. You can see the double 2x6 header above it. Uh, that's actually a recess in the wall. It's insulated with 1-inch polyisocyanurate with the foil face rather than the double 3.3 you see here. Um, here you can see the first layer and there's a second layer of 3.3 behind there. Um, this recess here that is approximately, I don't know, about five inches back from the finished surface of the wall is from my miter saw. So we're going to take this Bosch saw with the glide mechanism that doesn't stick out in the back anyway and tuck it tight into this so that my, my miter saw bench, which is going to run here, um, is going to project out as little as possible out of the wall. Uh, but anyway, so tonight's activity is going to be to build an extension jam like I have for this window here, here, to frame out around uh, around this frame. And then I'll later fill in between the ISO and that frame and the sheathing, uh, which is still on the floor over there, when it comes up to the frame, it'll close off that gap. So this is the before. So there's where the frame will go. There is the plywood I'm using for the frame extensions there behind the bench. And there's the empty workbench. Now it's time to get to work. Here we have my stock, my stop, I guess we'll call it, uh, screwed into the wall. This is screwed tight to these existing timber strand boards. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from here to the inside face of this because once I apply this, the plywood, the inside face of the plywood will be at the same measurement here. And none of these walls are even or plumb or anything like that. So every one of these jam extensions is actually tapered a little bit. So I take a measurement down here, measurement up there, and I cut the wood to fit. First thing I did was take the plywood and rip it to length. Now this is a rough length, uh, as you can see from this window over here that I already framed out. It can be a little long. Um, there you go. It doesn't need to be perfectly fit and perfectly square. It can run long and I'll just notch the insulation around it. So I've now cut this little sheet of plywood to uh, 42 and a half inches, I think, but it's a length that will work on all four sides. So now that I've got this cut to length, it's time to start measuring for the widths of the various extensions. You can never relative dimension enough. So here I've got a, I don't know what you call this, a stop rule, a slide rule. It's from Lee Valley. And uh, what I've done is I put this against the inside and I make sure that the inside edge of this sliding stop is even with the inside of the wood, which represents the inside of the sheathing. And now that finished dimension on the plywood, I catch this on the edge, I make a pencil mark at the tip, and I've got the right dimension for this, guaranteed no measure. I do the same thing for the top using a, a different stop rule, um, and that stops right there, even the same way. And uh, now by using the two of them, one trip in, I get both marks, I go out to the plywood, reference them, cut them, we're good to go. I've now got the reference marks. You can see here's the one at this end, and here's the one at this end. Uh, but because this piece I'm taking off is so small, it's roughly three and a half inches, laying the track of the track saw on it doesn't quite work. Um, you see how most of the track hangs over. So I'm going to set it up with the track on this side so I keep the saw on the bulk of the wood. In order to do that, I need to offset the cut by the width of the blade, and for that I use this Woodpecker's 1 16th shim uh, to reference right off the line. I make a new line on that side, and that's what I've referenced off. The blade is not exactly 1 16th, it's Festool, it's a metric of, of some sort, but I have found that the 1 16th is close enough. This is just a garage wall, so uh, it works well enough. If I, if I really was thinking, I probably should have figured out what the appropriate metric shim was and bought it when Woodpecker still made these things, but who knew? Anyway, so that's how we're going to account for ripping this narrow width and properly supporting the track. So here we have the cut piece. I'm not sure if you can make this out, but subtly right there you can see that my original pencil line. So that offset was just enough. And now let's take this over and see if she fits. I've had good success with them so far. I've not yet tried pre-fitting this one, but uh, we shall see. All right, you see that? It just fits a mallet tap, and I would get it in there, which we're going to call close enough because, uh, again, it's only a wall. Uh, there we go. Uh, it doesn't look nice here, but I'm not going to fight with it. It's very, very snug. It's, it's just snug enough for joinery, quite frankly, so we should be in good shape. Now it's time to make the other th other. Th Here's another snug fit, this one on the left side. Now I'm going to attach the left and right ones with pocket screws. Nothing uh, too complicated there. 
and then I'll make the top and bottom ones and I'll, I'll size the length of the top and bottom ones to the left and right ones again once the left and right ones are installed. When installing these, uh, the extensions I use again these slide ruley things to mark off a half inch reveal you can see one of the, my marks there and here and I just make a handful of pencil marks up and around the window and then I simply hold it to the line by eye I just hold it in place with one hand I pocket screw with the other and I go down and up from there tweaking it in and out and just holding it with one hand and screwing with the other very simple installation it's not perfect perfect but it's pretty damn close and it's certainly good enough for carpentry now on to cutting the base and the top now the sides are attached and uh, nothing really new to show you in the base and the top I just want to show you one thing is this one hasn't been cut to length yet it's supposed to get cut right there to be the right length but here's the thing is uh, hopefully you can see that little offset there that's what happens when I forget to make the mark that offsets for the blade so this is a blades width too small so I'm gonna have to scrap this piece and not use it which is why I have this little uh, I think that's how I got this one too is a blade width too small and this is just a leftover piece so uh, if you're gonna do this be careful of your bl blade offset or else uh, make sure you buy lots of extra plywood okay so here we are I have finished the extension jams for this center section which again is where this beautiful saw is going to sit tucked into that space um, everything's just pocket screwed as we went over use relative dimensioning to figure out all the measurements things pocket screwed the sides are left long no reason to cut them down I don't have to worry about the trim fit and then I just fit this I put it in and make a mark I cut it pretty simple dirty and quick pocket screws little gap here will get filled with insulation down at the bottom where I just don't have the room for the pocket screws I just put a screw in the end it doesn't really matter um, so that's it. That's tonight's progress on the shop. We'll keep moving along.